um, explosive activity that is um, anticipated could happen at the summit. Probably the biggest impact of that um, felt by people uh, around in the vicinity and around the island would be volcanic ash. And that's a very fine grained powdery rock. We know from the last time the volcano did this in 1924 that uh, ash fall uh, went as far away as Hilo, which is more than 50 miles away. And not, not huge accumulations, um, you know, in some places closer to the vent a few inches and then far away, sort of less than an inch, but it's still, you know, uh, not a great thing. Uh, you know, it gets into water catchment systems, it affects uh, roadways, it's not uh, good to breathe, people need to have dust masks and so forth. Seen and heard lots of media reports about you know, uh, very large things, refrigerator size, truck size, whatever term they're using. And those do come out of the volcano, but they're very, very restricted to right next to the vent, meaning within a couple hundred feet. And it's important to, to note that the active vent, which we call Overlook Crater, is a relatively small crater that sits inside something called Hale Mau Mau, which has been the focus of volcanic activity at the volcano for many, many hundreds of years. And that sits in a larger ring-shaped structure called the caldera, and no one really is uh, interacting with the volcano in any of those three places. The observatory is on the rim of the caldera. Volcano Village, which is the closest place where people live, is above the rim and um, about a kilometer to the north. And so during one of these explosive eruptions, if they happen, we expect that the most that they would see, especially in Volcano Village, are uh, particles maybe the, the size of a split pea. And you know, it would definitely be irritating to be hit by one of those things, but probably not uh, lethal. So you know, we're talking about sort of weeks to perhaps as much as three months. I'm sure that's you know not what residents in the uh, South Puna region would like to hear. The supply of magma to that area seems to be continuing. The earthquakes seem to be continuing. The uh, deformation of the ground seems to be continuing. So that if we saw that stop, then we might anticipate that the eruptive activity would stop soon thereafter. Uh, it's also possible, though, that th that that kind of activity can be discontinuous. You know, it can start and stop again. So that even if eruptive activity stops, we stop seeing earthquakes. Uh, it doesn't mean we're out of the woods um, until we're sure that the system has sort of relieved all of its pressure and uh, goes back to sort of a normal state. And so what happens with the sulfate uh, aerosols, they dissolve in water, they are acidic particulates, um, but when we have a wet atmosphere they dissolve in water and make sulfuric acid, which is one of the more common kinds of acid rain, especially uh, prevalent um, around coal-fired plants because uh, coal production and coal usage uh, when it's burned it also burns sulfur in the coal and that's what produces uh, acid rain. The important thing about the acid rain is that we know where the significant impacts are and where they sort of drop off. There are neighborhoods that are further downwind for instance the community that at South Point which is the southern tip of the island doesn't really receive significant amounts of acid precipitation so that the acid rain is also probably fairly localized, um, hard to predict, of course, because it depends on the winds, but probably something like a 10-mile radius around the summit of the volcano. Ash eruptions, of course, can affect aviation significantly depending on how much ash, how sustained it is, how big the ash column is, how high it goes. We don't have huge information about the impacts of um, volcanic ash on jet engines, but there were some overflights that happened um, over some uh, an eruption in the Aleutian Islands back uh, in the 70s, I believe. It might have been the 80s, but um, where, where they had some problems with the jet engine, where the basic ash particles sort of remelted and caused failure of an engine. And so for that reason, um, sort of with an abundance of caution, they don't like to let uh, airplanes fly anywhere near where there's volcanic ash. 